Hey everybody, great to be learning with you today as we begin our studies of Sefer Yehoshua, the book of Joshua. Until now, whenever you've studied Torah, you've probably studied it from the five books of Moshe. Those five books are Bereshit, Shemot, Vayikra, Bemidbar, and Devarim. Now the Torah has a lot of stories in it, that's true, but it's basically a book of law. That's what the word Torah actually means, law. There is, however, a whole history of the Jewish people that is not covered in these books. In fact, the material that we call the Torah is actually only one-third of our ancient texts. The more accurate way to call all of this material is Tanakh, which is made up of three parts, Torah, Nevi'im, and Ketuvim, which forms the acronym Tanakh. Sefer Yoshua is the first book of Nevi'im, which means prophets. A prophet is someone who has a prophecy which is a communication from Hashem. It's not just a prediction of the future, like predicting that something's going to happen three weeks from now. Rather, a prophecy is a message that is intended to get the Jewish people to do the right thing at the right time in the right way. Well, Sefer Yehoshua picks up where the Torah left off. Moshe has died, and Yehoshua is the new leader of the Jewish people. But who is this Yehoshua? Well, for starters, his full name is Yehoshua bin Nun, Yehoshua, the son of Nun. I know that sounds like a letter of the Jewish alphabet, but Nun was actually his father's name. He's from the tribe of Ephraim, and we've seen him before in the Torah. You might remember that when the Jews were suddenly attacked by Amalek, uh, just after they had crossed the Amsuf, Yehoshua, who happened to be a very, very good military officer, was given the job of leading the army into battle, a battle that they actually won. But we're also told something else about Yehoshua. He was, he was Moshe's closest student, so close, in fact, that the Torah tells us that Yehoshua never left Moshe's tent. Not literally, of course, but an expression that shows just how connected he was to his master Moshe. Well, now that we know a little bit about the concept of Tanakh and got a quick snapshot of who Yehoshua is, we're now ready to study the first parak, the first chapter of Sefer Yehoshua in class, and answer some of these important questions, starting with this. Why was Yehoshua chosen as the person to take over for Moshe? Now, Yehoshua seems like a great guy, but what was so impressive about him that he became only the second leader that the Jewish people had ever known? Second, Yehoshua is told three times by Hashem to be strong and courageous. Well, wasn't one time enough? What message is Hashem trying to tell Yehoshua, and why did he have to tell him that message so often? And finally, Yehoshua tells the Jews to gather food for a three-day journey as they prepare to land, uh, enter the land of Israel once and for all, after wandering in the desert for close to 40 years. But didn't they already have food? Remember the man, you know, the heavenly food that used to come down to their doorsteps each morning? The man continued to fall. So why is Yoshua telling the people to gather food? It seems kind of unnecessary if you ask me. Well, these are some of the issues we'll explore in class in greater detail when we return. Looking forward to flipping with you real soon.